What's up, everybody? Welcome to, I was going to say a new video, but it's really a new course. So welcome to the course, guys, on the Wolf of Shopify theme 3.0, 2.0, whatever it's called. It's the new theme, I believe. Yeah, 3.0. There we go. The Wolf of Shopify 3.0 course. Today, guys, not only are we going to now purchase the course, uh, purchase the video, uh, excuse me, the new theme, but we're also going to go ahead and jump into utilizing this new theme and i'm going to be showing you guys from a to z how to actually use the theme so wolf of shopify.com as you guys know has updated their theme and uh this new update and then as you guys know uh if you purchase the theme 365 days within a new update you get that update for free i personally didn't i was one of their very first customers so i do have to pay for this but you know what it's all good. Uh, this is a really, really good theme. It's really well worth the money. I took a look at some of the uh, images that they have here, and it looks like a lot cleaner. It looks like a lot more refined. Um, I really like the way that you know it has all these different, um, I guess you could say, these psychological factors to them. Through the course, I'll be not only utilizing the theme, but I'll be explaining what the purpose of certain tools and certain functions are so that when you guys are actually using this tool or using the theme rather, um, you know exactly what you're doing. Now, just before we even begin, I'm not saying that you guys have to use this theme whatsoever. Uh, I'm just simply showing what I'm doing. I know I've gotten requests for people saying, hey, can you do reviews of the new theme? Can you can you do uh, courses, videos, tutorials? And uh, absolutely. So here's where we're starting. Um, if you want, we can go ahead and take a look at some of the product page layouts. We can go ahead and take a look at that here. And they actually have that uh, here as well. Here, you know, here it is. Um, so pretty good stuff here. Uh, we can also take a look at the demo. So um, if we go over here, let's go ahead and take a look at the demo. And there you go. So this is an example of the demo. Okay, I'll just go ahead and accept the cookies here. You can take a look at the demo. It looks very, very clean. We got some different uh, sliding banners here and uh, without further ado I don't want to talk too much this is something that you guys could take a look when you're uh, going ahead and utilizing the tool uh, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in into essentially buying it this is my store right here we're gonna use the store we already have products uploaded and we're gonna get into the course so let me head back to wolf of let me pause the screen let me type in my credit card information and let me go ahead and get started all right so just give me a minute here bear with me guys you guys are not really gonna tell it's gonna be uh, the flash of an eye all right I'll be right back okay guys so I just went ahead and purchased the theme and once you purchase the theme you're going to get access to the theme files in your email so uh, here they have like little guides and stuff like that we're not gonna need this whatsoever at least in my opinion um, especially if you have this uh, course you're not gonna need it I'm gonna go ahead and log into my email and uh, real quick download the actual theme file Okay, guys, as you could see, I'm on my email address right now, and you could see that I have the two different emails. The first email is a, um, is a file email uh, where I can download the ordered files, and then the other email is a receipt. Uh, so I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to go ahead and download my files, and uh, that's where we'll get started. Okay, so once you click on the download file email, uh, you should be taken to this page right here where it says use the button below to download your file. So I went ahead and downloaded it, and it's in the process of currently downloading. You guys can probably see this on my screen recorder. It's towards the bottom of the screen recorder. It's currently downloading the file, okay? So as it's downloading, let's go ahead and get things set up here. And let's begin talking about our products. Now, once again, if you've never touched uh, Shopify before, or maybe you've had some familiarity with uh, Shopify, we're going to help you through the whole entire process so they don't have to worry about anything. So 
when it comes to Shopify, the first thing you're going to want to do before you even upload a theme or anything like that is just simply add your products. That's going to be the thing that takes the longest, at least in my opinion, right? Um, upload your product. So how is this going to happen? You go over here to add product, right? You're going to add your product by adding a title, adding a description to the product, and you're going to add some media. You can add images, you can add videos, really whatever you're into, right? After that's all taken care of, you have your price of the product. The price of the product is what you're going to add. Now, if you have variations to the product, for example, let's say you had a size small, size medium, size large, you're going to uh, go down here, you're going to have to scroll down here, and you're going to click on options, okay? And you're going to create the first option. So let's say the option is size, then you're going to hit enter here. And now you're going to create the option value. So let's say you have a small, right? You have small, and then you have medium and then you have large right and then you have extra large so you have these different uh, sizes here and you're gonna be able to edit these things and once you're completed you just hit done if you want to create another option let, let, let's say color then you can go over here and create color and you can now add the different kinds of colors now in my case I've already uploaded all my products so let me go ahead and pause this real quick and or excuse me not pause it but head back to the products and just show you all the different products here so we have this blackout tea for example and this is just an example this is a website that I created in the past to do a tutorial with a Shopify theme uh, obviously we're working on a new one I just figured I'd save time by showing you guys the actual uh, products here. So we have the description, we have the, the name of the t-shirt, we have small, medium, large, extra large, right? We have all these different ones with different quantities and different, uh, well in this case the prices are the same, but the images are here, everything's here, and more importantly, the product status is active. Once it goes on draft, the product will be not seen or unseen. So it's currently in the online store, and that's where it's visible. Now we can see here that my file, my, my theme file, failed to download. Let me go ahead and re-download it real quick, probably because I closed the site a little bit too early. Let me go ahead and head back. All right, guys, so it's actually downloaded now. So once you get the file, just go ahead and click on it. It says opening up the Wolf of Shopify theme. Let's go ahead and hit extract all, okay? Now, um, what we have here is we have unzip me for the Wolf Pack, and that's the folder that we're going to open up. Now, we, inside that folder, on inside that unzip me folder, you have some documentation, you have the one demo update, uh, and then here you have the, which are PDFs, by the way, here we have the new 3.0 Wolf theme. This is going to be the file that you're going to look for. So, when we go over here to the product page, let's go over here to the online store, and when you go to online store, head over here to the right side and go to add theme. That's the theme we're going to add and hit upload zip file. So you're going to have this pop up where you're going to be able to drag the, th the file of the theme. In our case, we already have it right here, which is referred to as the new 3.0 wolf theme. It's a zip file within two folders. We're going to take it, we're going to drag it, and we're going to drop it here. The new 3.0 wolf theme, and we're going to hit upload. Now it's going to upload the theme for us. Okay, so if you if you can't upload it properly, that means you simply just selected the wrong zip folder. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of these links here because we do not need them. And let's go ahead and let this upload. Now, don't worry for the first time. It's going to take a little bit of time to upload. Uh, always the first time because it is a larger file. It's going to take time to upload. So let's go ahead and get that going. So now, as this is uploading, and let's just get this cleared. We got already the concept of products. Um, by this point, you should have all your products uploaded right make sure you pause the the video make sure you upload all your products and you're ready to go now what we're gonna do is we're going to create our products into collections now you can see here I already have my collection set up I have men's tops shirts home page men's bottoms um, this is what you call a mega collection this is what I want to talk about right now we have mega collections and we have sub collections in my opinion so in the clothing world right we have men's and we have women's. But within men's, we have different collections, right? We have men's tops. We have men's bottoms, right? Within women's, we have swimwear. We have leggings. We have bras. But all of those things fit under women's. So here you could take a look and you could see I have a men's category here or a collection. And I have a women's collection. And for anybody who's, you know, worried or, or feels 
nervous about the word collection, don't worry. It's something very, very simple. It simply just means a category for your products to fit in. That's all it means, right? So here we have the women's category. We have the men's category, right? Within the men's category, we have men's bottoms, women's bottoms, uh, excuse me, men's bottoms, men's tops, shirts. And we'll show you guys how to actually control for this when you create your header menu or the menu of your store but anyways let's head over back here to your online store and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the theme and we're going to publish it so you can see here the theme is uploaded it says new 3.0 wolf theme now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the actions and we're going to select publish because we, we want to see how it's going to look in real time now don't worry if this is a little grayed out or whatever just hit publish it'll be perfectly fine we'll be able to edit it soon all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit customize here. And don't be afraid. It's going to take a little while for it to also update. And what you're seeing right now, guys, is the formation of the new Shopify 2.0 uh, software. So if your theme, and this is for anybody who's using any kind of Shopify theme out there, if your Shopify theme is not 2.0, you're not going to see the features that you have here on the left. You're going to be using the old editor. This is currently the new editor, and that's why the, this theme is a 2.0 theme. And when I say 2.0, I'm not referring to the wolf company i'm talking about shopify itself shopify had an old editor called the shopify 1.0 editor then they have the shopify 2.0 editor which is the editor that you're seeing here live the thing about the shopify 2.0 editor guys is that only 2.0 themes can work on it right you can't get a 1.0 theme and this theme is a 2.0 theme which is basically the newer generation of Shopify themes it means it's faster, it's classier, it's sleeker, and more importantly, it's interactive with what Shopify requires, which is great. Um, the 2.0 themes are just better than 1.0 themes in general. And if your theme, if your website doesn't look like this, where you know it, the configuration looks like this, you could even watch my older videos of how it looks. Uh, then you're probably utilizing a old theme. So just be aware of that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and exit this, you know, interactive thing. And it looks pretty blank right now. What we're going to do is we're going to first conf and this is how the theme will be configured. We have a grid banner. We have some products, right? We have a slider and we have a blog. This is perfect for 99% of the stores. Now, obviously, you can get creative and do your kind of your own thing, but let me show you guys where we're going to start. We're going to start here at the menu. So let's head back here and let's hit exit and let's go ahead and click on navigation. Navigation, you'll find it on the left side under online store and themes. Okay. Uh, navigation. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you want to have what's referred to as a header menu. For now, you can title it whatever you want. For the, this, That's for this theme. You don't necessarily have to title it header or anything like that. Now, there will be other themes where you're not allowed to change what the, the menu is called because that's how the theme reads it. But in this case, we can call it whatever we want. We have... Um, I'm going to delete this main one. Let's go over here to main menu. This is the one, main menu. For everybody watching this, let's just make things simple and title it main menu. We will have multiple menus. So call it main menu the exact same way that I typed it here. Capital M, A, I, N, space, lowercase M, E, N, U. Okay? So here we have men's. We have shirts, pants, tights, and shorts. And then we have women's swimwear, leggings, and bras. This is the configuration that I feel comfortable with as we speak. However, I can always change things. Now, just to show you guys what I mean by that, let's go ahead and actually add something so I could show you how to create a menu item. So here you want to click add menu item and you want to search for whatever item it is. So the best thing you could search for initially is the collections that you have, right? So if we created a collection for men's uh, shorts, for example, I can search for shorts here. And if nothing comes up here, I can search it in the links, right? So I can search for shorts right here. And you can see here, I have eight products that fit the word shorts and I have two collections. So I can click on that and I have all collections and shorts. So I'll click on shorts here and I call, and I'll title this men's shorts, right? And I can add that. And so now we have an item that's added. Now, if you ever want an item to be what's referred to as 
a mega or a main, and it will have under like in uh, uh, categories underneath it, then you just simply take it and drag it over to the right, whatever kind of uh, you know, collection that you want to put it under. So for example, I have the section called men's, right? And you can see here that this, these dots here are all the way to the left. If I want to take this and drop it underneath it, I'm just going to simply drag it, put it here, right? Well, now it's at the same. I don't want to do that. I want to drag it underneath and then move it to the right, just like the way it is now. So let's just say I wanted to create a menu within a menu. Well, I can take this men's shorts and I can drag it under the word, any word here, but then I'll move it to the right again, right? So you can see here, I moved it to the right. And so basically what this means is that in my menu, I would have a category called men's with a drop down. And in that drop down, there are th different categories. There's shirts, pants and tights, and then there's shorts. But shorts will also have a drop down that will say men's shorts, okay? Now, I'm not saying that this is ideal. You don't want to set this up. I'm just showing you how to do this for the function of it so that you know exactly what you're doing. So, for example, let's say you had a supplement company and you had uh, pre-workout supplements, right? Uh, what your main thing would be, let's say, supplements, right? And then right under it, it would say pre-workout. And then under pre-workout, it would have another drop down that one would say with caffeine. Another one would say without caffeine, right? As an example, okay? Now let's go ahead and head back here and let's just view this in real time just so we can get an idea of how it looks. So we're going to view here. We have men's, we have shirts, we have pants, we have shorts, and then we have men's shorts, right? These are all clickable, so I could just click on this, and it will take me to the category page as to how it looks, and you can see it already looks phenomenal. Uh, looks very, very clean, very good-looking setup for a Shopify store. So with that being said, let's go ahead and head back to main menu here, and let's just delete this because you guys know I'm not going to use this because it's just redundant and it's extra, okay? So... We have those two sections here. Now, let's think about what are other things that we can add to our main menu. Well, we have our product categories. And nine times out of ten, if you guys are watching this, you're probably going to have more product categories than me um, because this is just a very simple store for our tutorial. Now, things that you don't want to include in your main menu is going to be content that you're going to include in your footer menu. Now, your footer menu is all the way at the bottom. The cool thing about this is that we have a footer menu that is really takes out all the, the fuss out of it. And what I mean by that is that people don't have to actually navigate to the footer to create anything or add anything. This is what I want to show you uh, later down the road. I'll show you how to get this all done um, so that you can have a better user experience because there are going to be certain things that we do need to include in our site that don't necessarily or are not necessarily found on the footer menu. So I'll just go ahead and show you that in just a minute. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and, and head over here to our home page. That's what we're going to start with. So let's go ahead and head over to our home page. And the first thing that we want to do is we're going to want to have a logo. Now, my logo here in the middle is bright white. I mean, we can't see it. So we're going to have to edit things that it's visible. Now, I personally recommend that your website has a white background, white header banner, white everything, because it's much, much cleaner. Uh, researchers have actually studied how successful a website might be based on the color. And they've actually said that white tends to convert more. So when we look at websites like Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon, and the backgrounds are all white, there's probably a reason why. It looks cleaner, it looks more effective, and more importantly, it increases conversion rate. So let's go ahead and start here. And let's head over to our header. The header button is all the way on the left. And you can see here, the nice thing about Shopify is it highlights to us exactly what's in the header, right? And we can now select a logo image. In our case, our logo image is what we don't have one. It's it's bright white. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and let's take a look at what we can fit for a logo image. And I actually like this yellow uh, alpha Lee logo. And I can look for even a different colored one like this black one. I think actually it looks pretty good. I like black better. So let's go with black and we're going to stick with that. And let's go ahead and click save here. So now we have our logo. Now for any moment in time, I want you guys to add all your different graphics that you're going to need uh, as we go. You don't have to do it uh, pre-made kind of the way I have it 
whenever you guys see me add a logo or add anything like that, just simply pause the video, pause the course, and uh, add one for yourself, okay? So now let's go ahead and continue here. We have our logo. Now what we can do is we can configure our layouts. So we have different header layouts. We have layout one, two, three, four, five. This is currently layout three which is actually a really good layout. We have our social medias, we have our logo, we have our compare product compare, we have our product cart, we have our men's, we have our women's, we have our search product section. Now what we can do is we can play around with our layout. So here I'm gonna select layout number one, and you can see here it has changed a little bit, right? We don't have our social medias, right? Our search bar doesn't occupy the whole entire bottom. This should be above, but now it's changed, right? So now we can do layout number two. Layout number two is actually really, really cool, really sleek. I like this much, much better. Uh, and I think this is the one I'll go with, but let's just for the sake of it see layout number four. So this is layout number four. And here we have layout number five. Um, I, like a, I like layout number two and layout number five. Uh, layout number two is actually... A little bit thicker it's a little bit fatter than layout number five I'm gonna go with layout number five just to you know go ahead and stick with it and see how it goes now let's go ahead and go with that now what we could do is I something I want you guys to know is you can have or enable what's referred to as a sticky header and basically what a sticky header is is as you're scrolling down the header is gonna stay at the top so if I go over here and enable sticky header you could see here, I'm scrolling, let me go ahead and save it, maybe it's not effective right now, um, but basically, you could see here, it's it's uh, it's stuck there, right, the header's stuck there. Now, for the sticky header, a lot of times people like to maybe change the colors and things like that for the logos, I like to keep it just the way it is, and that's actually the best way. Guys, the more simple it is, the better you'll do, and that's what we actually tend to find now with our, with our Shopify store. So you could see here how... The sticky header, excuse me, um, is is kind of saved uh, as I scroll down. Everything's kind of there. Now there is an effect to where the logo becomes smaller when I scroll down here, from what I could see, and that's not something that I really want, or that's not something that I care for. Some people would be okay with that. I personally don't care for it, uh, so I'm actually going to remove the sticky concept, and once again, it's all about how good looking things are, if something doesn't look good for your uh, account, then don't do it, it's just as simple as that, so for me, I don't like the way it looks, uh, so I'm just not going to uh, essentially allow it for uh, my store, so you can see here when I scroll down, nothing is happening, so now let's go ahead, and since the header is taken care of, our menus are taken care of, right, and remember, our menus are found in the beginning when we added the navigation, what we're going to do here is, and, and this is for anybody who hasn't done this yet, um, make sure your main navigation menu, uh, you go scroll down, main navigation, hit change, and change menu, and that's where you're going to select the main menu, remember that, because uh, if you haven't done this already, at this point, it should be taken care of, let's go ahead and take care of our banner now, our, our essentially our main banner, and that's going to be the first one labeled grid builder, okay, now with our grid builder, we have a, a section here that says banner, and we have the actual grid builder. I don't want to have a background image to the actual grid builder, but I want to have an image for the actual banner. So here with the banner, we have a lot of things that we could do. Like for example, I could, you know, test different things and upload different things and we could see how different things look. But in this case, I need a background for our our banner, right? So here, I can look through the different images I have, and I could see what's going to fit for our builder. Now, this image, for me, wouldn't work. This is more of a product image or a collection image from a split banner. This wouldn't look good for a hero banner. Now, just to be clear, what a hero banner is, is it's simply a banner that stretches all the way from the left to all the way to the right, right? So something that's essentially more horizontal than it is a vertical is better. Now, you don't want it to be you know, too small, but you want it to have some kind of level. So anything that's like this, that's a more vertical than horizontal is not good. We want something more horizontal than it is vertical, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at some of our image here on the right. We could take a look and see different opportunities. So we have this image, for example, right, which is good because it is more horizontal than it is vertical. We have this image, 
which does take up a lot of space. It's really up to you if you want to use it. This image is not good, right? This image is still also more vertical, uh, more uh, uh, vertical than it is horizontal. We can keep looking here and see if there are any other options. I think the first option that we selected is probably going to be the best option, which is this one right here. It just simply fits the best. It looks the best. That's the one we're going to go with, right? And we could actually go with margins. We could do spacings, things like that. So if we want to create a margin from the top, we can do that, right? Margin from the bottom, we can do that. And you can see here, it's a very, very slight change. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to move it downward. So I'll just go like this and move it downward, right? If I want to move it downward again, I could do that. So it's up to you how you want to set it up, right? Up to you. There's no, you know, nobody's going to sit here and say one is wrong and one is right, All right? So this is what I'm going to go with. So now let's go over here and head over to the banner section. And there's a section with URL. Now with the URL guys, we have a, well, we have a few things. We have a button URL, right? And we have an image URL. If I select this, right? In this case, we want only our button to do the talking for us, or we want only our button to work for us. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and deactivate our inspector tool here so that I can actively see what I'm clicking on. Now, you can see here I clicked on the button, and it took me to a default page. Now, once again, this page is, is doesn't exist yet, so we're not. don't worry about that. But let's head back to our home page. We want our button to do the talking, right? We want our button to do the communication for our customers. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over here, go to the URL section, and we're going to remove this URL that's already there. And what we're going to do is we're going to select collections, and we're going to select all collections. So what I want to happen, or maybe not even all collections, we might even go to all products. That's even better. Because what we want is we want something that says shop all here, and then consumers will be able to click on the button. It will take them to all the products. So let's hit save here. And let's just do a quick test by clicking this button, and it should take us to all products. And indeed, it does, right? So let's head back to the home page. And we have a product button that takes us to the product collection. Now let's get, go over here back to the banner and let's edit the shop yoga now because we're not selling yoga products. Let's go ahead and click shop or shop all, right? Shop all our new releases, right? Something like this. It doesn't have to be too advanced or anything like that. You can kind of add what you want. So let's hit save here, okay? And so now this is taken care of. Now let's go ahead and scroll down. So we have, we have a section here called New Arrivals, which is this next section. Let's go ahead and turn on our inspector so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Is this collection carousel. Now what a carousel is, is it simply just spins based on the products that are there. So now that I see a collection carousel here, we can create what's referred to as a mix of products. So I can go over here to my collection carousel, select all products, change the collection to the homepage collection, for example. So let's give a second for it to load. Let's click the homepage selection. You can see here I have men's products and I have women's products. So it fits perfect. It says our new arrivals, latest product and new collection. And you can see here it automatically spins for me, which is great. So let's go ahead and save here and we could see here we already completed a whole chunk of our website we have our header we have this banner we have our collection that automatically spins for us let's go ahead and head over to the next section here which is our collection tabs right so collection tabs what they are i actually call them product cabinet which is basically every single one of these words clothing accessories mats etc these are keywords to represent the collection that the customer will select so let's say we want to create a collection for women here, right? But we want to show off the different products that women have. So here we have collection tabs. We can hit change here, change collection. And let's think of the different products that women are have. The first one they're going to have is swimwear, right? We have another collection for women, which is we're going to replace accessories here, which we're going to call leggings, right? Then we have another collection here where we might... Let's go ahead and take a look what else. We have pants and tights, right? Or that's not women's, that's men's. Let's click on women's tops, for example. So now we have three different collections. Let's go ahead and hit save here. We Let's remove the inspector. And we have clothing, we have accessories, and we have the tops. What I'm going to do is since the tops category is more full, you can see here I have four products on the tops. I'm just simply going to grab it, move it to the top.
Now you can see here, it still says masks, it says sells, sells clothing, accessories. I'm going to change that. So I'm going to head over to my right hand side. Instead of mats, I'm going to click on, I'm going to type in tops, right? I'm going to type in tops. And instead of clothing for the next one, I'm going to see what collection that is. That's swimwear. So I'm going to type in swimwear. And let me go ahead and clean that up, swimwear, right? And let me see if swimwear is the way I want it, yep. And then what's next is we have our uh, we have our leggings, right? So let me go ahead and type in leggings to replace the word accessories. So now we have our tops, we have our swimwear, and we have our leggings. Here we have a product uh, collection view that's for... Uh, you know, both categories. We have men's and women's products. Basically, essentially, all our products in a category. Now, you can see here, as I'm spinning, notice something interesting. As I'm manually spinning, there's this purple bar that moves to the right and to the left. And this is perfect because this is going to, without a consumer necessarily uh, waiting for it to spin, he could just click on this button here and it will take them to the next segment. So this is great, right? And that's what essentially makes this system better. Now, notice here so far, we have the banner, we have the header, we have this uh, spinning collection or this collection carousel. We have our product cabinet, which we can select the different products that we have. What's next is we have a split banner in a three-way split. So this is called uh, a split banner. There are two different kinds of split banners. You have a three-way split banner and you have a normal traditional two-way split banner. So with our grid builder here, excuse me, we have three banners listed. Now, if you notice, we could actually delete one of these, what's referred to as blocks. So let's say I want to remove a block and go ahead and do that. But now I can see that these two blocks are fitted like this. Well, what I can do is I can increase their column size. So we know that the column size is four out of 12 currently. We have two of them. Well, we can increase each one to six out of 12. So like this one is four out of 12. And let me go ahead and increase it to 6 out of 12, just the way it is here. So now I have a traditional split banner, as you guys can see. Well, what's ideal for a split banner? Well, in our identity of a Shopify store, we need to have a men's collection, women's collection. Those are the two main categories for a split banner. And this is why split banners are so, so critical. Split banners are critical because... You have to every business has a few main categories for what they sell. For example, if it's an outdoors and recreational store, you have fishing and hunting, right? For another store, it might be fishing, hunting, and clothing. For another store, it might be, you know, whatever it is, right? If you're a gaming store, you might sell uh, computers and you might sell accessories. If you're another gaming or, uh, you know, a tech store, you might sell keyboards and mouses, you know, mice, whatever. In our case, since we're a clothing store and we serve men and women, those are the two main categories. So you need to essentially think, what are the main categories of my product? How can I create split banners for them? So let me go over here, go to my grid banner, and I'm gonna have one that says men's, one that says women's. So let's go over here, and the first one, let's just label it as men's. Now in order to do that, we have this first banner, right? And uh, let's go ahead and head over here and let's just label the button men's. So we're going to move the, move the word tops here. Let's type in men's. And for the second one, let's go to banner here, move the word bottoms, and let's type in women's. Okay. And let's hit save. So now that that's saved, we have two different banners here. And once again, this is just simply because I have two main categories. You can change that if you don't have two main categories. And we're going to go over here to select image. We're going to select our best image that represents men's products. So let's click here. Let's see the image, which looks actually really, really nice. Uh, let's go ahead and keep looking just in case. We have another men's image. Let's go ahead and leave it at this for now. We might go ahead and switch it. Let's go ahead and head over to the women's. We want some kind of um, similarities in terms of the height, the things like that of the actual image. You can see here, this actually looks really good. The uh, Both models in the images are wearing uh, this purplish kind of color, a red color. I, I really don't know what you would call it. Let's just say this reddish color, right? 
And one is female, one is male, men's, women's. And notice that when I take my mouse and I hover over the image, it has this little animation to it where it's a zoom in effect. This is great because it catches people's attention for the actual product. So this is great, right? So let's go ahead and hit save here. And a lot of the times when there's some sort of animation, it actually does catch people's attention just a little bit more, which increases their engagement. And that's very something very, very important for success. Now we have here a spacer. Now this spacer, let's go ahead and turn on our element inspector. It's just simply right here. So it adds a little space between these two sections, which works great. Let's move on to our slide builder or excuse me, our slide banner, which is similar to what we have here but it just presents the products in a different way. So in this case, we have two uh, or three banners, right? And let's go ahead and do this where we activate all three just for the fun of it. And let's go over here and head over to the block. Let's select our first image. And based on our images, we can think of what products can we sell. So we have, for example, here we have, let's say, let's we have this image, which looks great. Let's go ahead and save that. We have the next one for the next block. Let's go ahead and select a new image. And we'll just have this women's related because I have a lot of women's content here that looks really good. Um, so let's see. Let's go for, let's say, this image. And let's see how it looks, right? And then we have, is that saved? I forgot to save that. So let's go ahead and go back here and let's select the image with the model wearing blue here. Let's select that. And you can see here, once it spins, and I'll remove my inset, uh, inspector, you can see here, looks really good. It looks very, very professional. And then we have our third image here. And we have, let's go ahead and find an image for us here. And let's go with, I want to I wanna pick something that's a little bit different. So maybe something... And, and we'll see here because not every image. Yeah, see, this one's pixelated, so this one wouldn't look good. Let's see this one. This one is not ideal either. This is pixelated. This is pixelated. It has to look good. It has to look perfect, essentially. This looks really good, too, but it doesn't fit the sizes that we want. Um, let's go ahead and pick something that we know is going to look good for. This looks okay. I'm not going to lie. It looks pretty good. Maybe we can pick something like this. And there we go. I'm happy with that. So here we have um, this product, this product, and, and just going to keep spinning, right? So it looks great. They're about the same size. Uh, they all look really, really good. They're not pixelated. And this is why photography is important. I actually highly recommend that if you want to take your Shopify store seriously, you're going to have to invest in some sort of photography, whether it be you do it yourself or uh, somebody's going to do it for you. Photography is crucially important because you got to remember, this is what the consumers are seeing to purchase the product. Now, the thing that I like about this is that um, it presents everything perfectly here. Now, let's go over here and head over to the block. And what we can do is we have a button here that says view products. We have some text that says order now, join the sticker club. Now, I'm going to remove all the text at the top. So let's say, for example, I don't want this text, right? I just want simply the button, okay? And that's what I'm going to do. I just want it to look a little bit more classy, a little bit more clean. So here for this one, I'm going to remove the order now text, right? Let's go ahead and save that, which was here on the blue model, right? The blue, the blue image. Now for this one, I'm going to also remove the order now text, get rid of that. Let's go ahead and save here. And it's pretty much perfect. So there we go. Okay. So there we go. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to click shop now here. Now for you guys as a, as a little recommendation, whenever you are doing this, 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 uh, I guess you could say this spinning grid here or this spinning, uh, collection image type, you want your images to represent a very particular collection. So this image should represent collection A, for example. This image should represent collection B. This image should represent collection C. You can also have it, you know, alternatively to represent a particular product. So for example, you could say shop the product or shop product, shop product. And when they click on the button, it will take them to the exact product 
that it's being sold for. Now, these are just good-looking images, and I figured I'd put them here and feature them because you don't want to waste good-looking content, right? But that's just simply just my recommendation. I'm not saying that you have to do that, but the same way that you configure images to categories is the same way you do this. So shop now. Let's go ahead and hit save here. And really what makes somebody a quote-unquote expert at this is just when they know how to mix and match the amount of content that they have presenting with the type of products that they have. A lot of people are short on content, but they figure out how to make it work. A lot of people are short on products, but they have a lot of content, right? So like, let's say they have five different products, but they have a lot of content for those products. They just got to figure out how to make it work. And that's really what it comes down to. So you can see here, every time we scroll or when it automatically slides for us, it will say shop now. And that's the cool thing. Uh, here we have our blogs. Our blogs are already taken care of for us. We can go ahead and select on the blog here, and we can select what blog section we have. If you don't want to have a blog, honestly, guys, you really don't need to. If you have a product that requires consumer education, maybe you should add a few blogs. But if you don't want to have a blog, you go to this section here, click on the blog, and just click on this little eye icon to make it disappear, and, and they won't see it. So let's just say in my scenario, I don't want it. Well, let's go ahead and hit save. And that's it. It's just as simple as that. So I don't want to have it on my homepage. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just simply, I don't want to have it on my homepage. Now this section here, money back guarantee, free shipping, safe payment, etc. You can go over here and you can edit those actual things. So the uh, you would actually have to, you know, all these different things, you could have to change it. For example, you have the uh, the text here, free shipping over $99. I just want to leave it the way it is because uh, I feel like that's what looks good. So now that we completed the homepage, let's take a look at how it actually looks like. And you can see here, we're just flying through this. So let's go ahead and hit view here. And we can see here uh, on the page, this just looks phenomenal, right? We have our products. This looks great. We have our different uh, tabs here, right? Swimwear, leggings, Tops looks a little bit better because it's more full. It has more products on it. Here we have our split banner that just looks amazing. Look how it fills up the screen that way. Just looks tremendous here. And then we have this section here, which is our spinning carousel tab, which is just, you know, nobody could really complain about how this looks. It looks very good. Then we have simply the bottom here with our footer. So now what I'm going to take a look is our product page. And so let's go ahead and click on any one of these products. Let's select this one, for example. Here we have a default product page with the name of the product, whether it's in stock or not, uh, how many have sold in the last few hours, uh, some text here, and we'll go over all of this, but this is what you can expect. Let's go ahead and head over to the editor, and let's actually work on now editing the product page. So let's select our default product, and let's work on what we're seeing here. And you know what? Just for the sake of the video, I'm not going to select this product. I want something that has a lot of images on it so I could show you guys how the product is selected. This is a little bit better because we have some images down here that we can work with because that is going to come into play. Okay, so now let's go ahead and handle the product page. First, let's talk about the anatomy of the product page before we start looking into the different variations, the way they look, things like that. First, you have your image on the left. Now, just to be clear, there are different layouts. So if we head over to product page here to the right, we have our layouts, but we have our images to the left. Now that will change based on the layout. We have title of the product, the uh, first psychological trigger here to the right, 25 sold in the last three hours. We have the price of the product. We have the size of the product. We have our add to compare along with our buy it now, add to cart. We have our free shipping motivator. It says uh, spend uh, X amount to get free shipping. We have a real-time visitor counts. We also have our shipping order by date. Now, what we have here is also an empty area where we can add our trust badge images, and also we have our description followed by our views, custom tabs, related products, and then we have recently viewed products. So any products that I clicked on will be in the recently viewed related products in the same category, uh, depending on how we configure these settings. So let's go ahead and begin here, and let's take a look at the different product layouts uh, before we even jump into anything. So we're at layout V6 right now. Let's go ahead and select layout version 1. Layout version 1 is similar to layout version 6. The only difference is the images are not going to be shown here, the extra images. 
Okay, uh, it's up to you if you want to use that. Me personally, it's not for me. Here we have a uh, product version two, which is actually really, really good because it adds the images here to the left, which is great. We can go ahead and save this if this is something that we want to actually uh, utilize, right? And we can actually click on these different images and take a look at them here. It does, does a great job. We have layout version three here, which is also really good and this is actually the one that I'm going to stick with uh, here we have layout version 4 which let's just go ahead and save here and let's just give it a minute for it to load uh, because it is a lot here so it takes the images and puts it up here right as opposed to on the left side um, and then we have product version 5 let's go ahead and save this just give that a second See here, the images or the thumbnail images are on the bottom of the main photo. And then finally, product version 6. I'm going to stick with product version 3. Uh, that's kind of, I don't want to say it's my favorite, but I feel like that's what works good for this one here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add trust badge images. Now, for the trust badges, you guys can create your own. But the concept of a trust badge is that you're going to include the top benefits of your business. Uh, now for this section here where you add your trust badge, it doesn't always have to be related to trust. Although trust is the number one indicator that essentially decides whether a consumer purchases from a website or not, what it really is is a place where you can tell consumers what makes your brand or your business different. So for example, if you're running some sort of discount, some sort of offer, some sort of deal, and you wanna depict that to the consumer, that might be a great place to put a graphic here for that, right? So it's, it's different aspects. If you wanna to share to the consumer maybe why your products are made uh, with a certain type of material. You can depict that to the consumer there. That's really what this area is for. A lot of people utilize this section for a quote-unquote trust badge, a way that you can invoke trust with the consumer. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to a section where I'm going to just search for trust badge image. Now, once again, I'm not saying that you should do this. I'm just simply showing an example. Uh, I'm going to take this exam. Uh, let me find a better one. Let's use this one for actually, this one is pretty good. Let's go with this one and let's go ahead and save it. And we'll just simply drag and drop the image. Now, uh, to do this, we're going to go to theme settings here. And we're going to select all the way on the bottom here. Uh, in the theme settings, we have our above the free shipping section, select image. I'm just going to take this, and drag and drop it, and it will show up in this section here. So let's give it a second for it to load, and there it is. All right, so just to be, so everybody's aware, you go to the product page, you go to... Um, where it shows here, you scroll all the way down, then you hit the theme settings button, which will take you to this section here. You just keep scrolling down all the way, and that's where you add the image. Now for me, free shipping, I want to set it to $99, so I'm going to set it to $99. The visitor counts, there's no reason to edit them or play around with them. Uh, they're going to produce a random number every time, which I can explain the psychological benefit of this, uh, but really what it comes down to is human beings think in a certain set of ways. Scientists study this. And the way that human beings think produce certain results. And typically when human beings are given set scenarios, we can predict what human beings are going to end up doing. Now, Psycholo psychology teaches us that there are these defaults that human beings are used to behaving in, and they're referred to as the psychological cognitive biases. What a bias is, is a, essentially a likelihood or a liken to that somebody's going to essentially behave a certain way. And what we do is, as people who are selling products, we know what are the cons are the human being psychological triggers. One of those triggers are scarcity. Another trigger is trust. Another trigger is incentivization. These are different words that represent human biases that invoke certain behaviors. Well, in the case of e-commerce, if I want to sell a product, I need to make sure that my customer is motivated to buy. I need to make sure that my customer is incentivized or inspired to buy. And I also need to make sure that my customer trusts me, right? And so trust 
comes from the overall image, right? When I say the overall image, it refers to the vibe, the, 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 the image of your website. How does it look? Does it look professional? Does it look pixelated? Does it look old? Does it look like it's not kept? Does it look like it's out of service? All these things contribute to trust or a lack of trust. In this case, when somebody comes to our website and they look how professional this website is, they're going to say, yes, this invokes trust. They're not going to think, oh man, these images look pixelated, or man, this website looks like it was built in 1990. I'm not going to touch this product. I'm not going to buy this product because I just simply don't trust the website. Be honest with yourselves. How many times have you came to a website and had lack of trust for the business and you just weren't sure if they were a legitimate company and that has caused you to not purchase a product many times that's the first i guess you could say um indicator that's an individual with either buy or not buy a product if trust exists or does not exist in the equation the next thing is incentivization or motivation and the way this happens is that there are different ways to incentivize a consumer you could do it through uh, discounts. You could do it through just simply the quality of the product, but you could also do it with different indicators that we see here. One of those indicators is a spend rate, so a spend motivator. Here, I'll give you an example. If I add this product to my cart, which happens to be the very first product I add to my cart, you can see here, let's just say I go over here to the check or the cart page, you can see it says spend 57 USD to get free shipping. This is an example of an incentivization. Now, on this web page, there are a few aspects or a few things that incentivize or inspire customers to end up purchasing. There are a few things. That shipping motivator is just simply one of them, right? And we see this here on the product page. We also see it in the cart page. And we also see it in the uh, view cart page, right? So it all exists in all three. The thing that I would say is that's just simply one aspect. Well, Next to incentivization, we have scarcity. Now, scarcity is one of the strongest motivators uh, to make a consumer go out there and actually purchase a product. I'll give you a huge example. During COVID-19, what happened? People went, stormed the shelves in grocery stores. There was no water left. There was no food left. There was nothing that you could buy on the shelves that once had existed. The shelves were empty in all grocery stores. And to the point where there were lines outside of grocery stores where they were limiting how many items that you can take. Well, that was because of scarcity. People thought the world was coming to an end when COVID-19 hit. And so things became rare in the consumer's eyes. Well, that happens when you have uh, essentially a website like this that contributes to two factors. Here we have a section that says real-time visitor count, right? Where it shows a certain amount of people on the website. And here it shows X amount sold in the last amount of hours. All these are indicators in a consumer's mind that there might be a situation where I might not be able to access this product anymore because it might sell out. There might be too many customers that are going to buy the product that I want to buy. And so for that reason, guys, this causes um, scarcity, right? Now, we, here we have a social proof aspect that validates scarcity. Now, what is social proof? Social proof increases trust as well. And when I say trust, it is a variable-based trust. And let me explain what that means. Let's say uh, there's two groups of kids, right, in a high school or, or college or whatever. In a high school, let's just use a high school. Or, or middle school, and they're out in the yard during recess. One kid throws a rock at another kid, and they're in, they're in separate groups. Both of the groups want to fight each other. The first two kids go up and start fighting. Next thing you know, the whole group comes in and starts fighting. Why is that? It's because of social proof. All they need to see is one person do it and see a variable of base trust, meaning, uh, you know, all they need to see is or they all they need to trust in is somebody's going to go with them. Somebody's going to be the first one to go. And then all of a sudden they all go. This has to do with social proof. This has to do with uh, consumerism. We all know this. When Kim Kardashian has a certain product and she promotes it to her uh, audience, why do you think people buy it? It's because they see Kim Kardashian wearing it. In the same notion, if a celebrity is hated and they're seen with that same product, there's a strong notion that that individual might start hating the product as well. We see this 
with examples of Hitler, for example, if we gave Hitler a Coca-Cola and he drank Coca-Cola, a lot of people wouldn't want Coca-Cola as much simply because Hitler is the one who is promoting it. And I'm just using that as an example. Hopefully nobody takes offense to that. But all I'm saying is if an individual is hated and they're promoting a product, that product is going to be hated. We actually see a strong example of this with the supplement company Shreds. If you guys are familiar and if you're aware, there was a company called Shreds. Let's go ahead and pull up Shreds right now. Shreds is a supplement company that used to be literally the best supplement company. And when I say the best, I mean the most profitable. I'm not saying that their supplements are good. I know nothing about this company. Uh, Their supplements, I don't know anything about, but I know their story. It was a company where... um, They had a few athletes, and one of the athletes, and I'm not going to name names. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'll say the name. It doesn't matter. Everybody knows him. Devin Physique. He was caught for Photoshopping his physique. A few YouTubers caught on to this, exposed him for what happened, essentially, and um, the company, Shreds, almost went out of business because of it, and now their income has dropped you know, hundredfolds. They were the biggest company at the time. They were making the most money. And then because of that expose, nobody wanted to associate themselves with the company more, specifically customers. They didn't care for the company anymore. Now, with that being said, that really just shows the concept of social proof. Now, this little pop-up on the bottom left of my screen here is a perfect example of what social proof actually does for us. So, This idea here, when somebody sees X amount sold in the last amount of hours, 21 visitors currently on the website, those two aspects are things that control for incentivization, inspiration to buy the product, which leads to scarcity. Consumer will think, oh my God, there's so much sold in the last few hours and there's 25 people on the website right now. I better get mine right here, right now. Then the next thing they see is a pop-up of XYZ product sold, XYZ product sold, uh, new product sold, this product sold, that product sold. Next thing you know, all of these factors come together and create what is referred to as the Lollapalooza effect. Lollapalooza effect in consumer psychology just basically means that when all these different contributors come together, right? When all these different things come together, the effect is much greater. A lot of people think that they could just use a little pop-up and think that will create sales. That's not the case. You need to have all the different factors to come together working in unison, in amalgamation, to increase the likelihood of success with your Shopify store. That will make a difference between a 1% and a 5% conversion rate, a 1%, 3%, 3%, and a 7%, right? All these things kind of do dictate, all right? So now that you know the kind of the anatomy of the page, you added your trust badges, just make sure that your products have descriptions. You can customize your custom product tabs by simply heading over to the product page here. We go ahead and scroll down, and uh, we have, let's go ahead and see here, we have theme settings, and we have, let's see here is, oh, here it is on the left, custom tabs, custom tab one, custom tab two. This is a place where you can talk about your products, talk about your business, and uh, you can go ahead and do that here on the left. I'm going to leave mine blank. You can leave it, you know, you guys can edit it the way you want to. So just about now, we've conquered a lot of different aspects around this Shopify store. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. We have our header, we have a top bar, and by the way, for the top bar, head over to header, go ahead and scroll down, and here it is, it's called the header promo box. You can edit stuff there, and you can actually make it clickable. So you can add a link here if you wish. Um, So that's really up to you, but it's not necessary. Uh, You can even remove it. If you wanted to, you have a header, you have your banners, uh, your buttons are should be all connected. Let's go ahead and test the buttons. Here we have the swimwear section, and uh, it is connected to the swimmer, so that's good. Um, let's see here. It's connected to leggings. That's for, which one is this? That's for this bottom one here. Let's go ahead, and that's for, okay, let's see what we got here. The tops. Tops, tops, tops. Okay, yes, that is, that's for these. So that's all connected, right? So these buttons are connected here, 
right? That's all good. These buttons are connected because obviously they're products. Um, our add to cart is fully functional. So if we click add to cart here and we view the cart. Okay, so something that we do want to change is this section, the you might also like section. So for the you might also like section, this is where we want to have pop-ups. And this pop-up is what's going to essentially... Um, it essentially create upsells for us. So with that being said, let me actually go ahead and remove this breadcrumb section because we don't want this. And this image is no good. So let's go ahead and cancel this. Let's hit change here. And uh, let's uh, actually not show the background. Let's go ahead and save this very, very quickly. Let me go ahead and do this. Okay, so for our pop-up, when we add some product to a cart and we want a product to or products to show up down here, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our section on our theme settings. So head over to your theme settings, select the cart button. So if you see here, there's going to be a drop down for cart, select that button, scroll down to collection. So here, this section that says collection, what you're going to do is you're going to select the collection of the products that you want it to show up. So for example, let's say I wanted it to show the women's tops and I hit select here. If I add a product to a cart, I should see all the list of women's tops uh, in this box. There we go in this box here that pops up. So what this is, is this is just simply an upsell, which increases average order value. The benefit of this is that a consumer can come to your website and let's say they spend $40 on average or they order one product on average. What this is as an upsell, you might also like section is the consumer might look at see other products and have other products presented to them and say, you know what, I actually like this product too. Let me go ahead and add this product to the cart. And there you go. They simply have added or increased the average order value just by a small amount. A good thing to do here is you can think of what goes well in a upsell. So think of it this way. Imagine if I was at McDonald's and I ordered a cheeseburger. Well, what do they offer me? They offer me upsells. They say, hey, would you like a drink with that? Would you like fries with that? Well, this is the exact same thing. We are upselling. We are offering consumers more products, right, in an effort to increase our average order value. And that's essentially what it is, and that's exactly what it does. So that's how to get that part set up. And I'm happy we got that done because uh, we had to get that out of the way. But let's head over back to the homepage, make sure all the buttons are fully functional, fully working. Let's check these two banners here, make sure the buttons are connected properly. Yeah, so they're not connected properly because we have the UR, the URL lead to the homepage. So let's go ahead and delete that and let's go to collections for the men's one and let's select men's products. This is also another benefit of having that large collection because this is a, 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 it's a general collection. It's a general collection in the men's space. We could have made it more specific like men's tops, men's bottoms, but that's not what happened in this case. We just left it to men's and that's why we left it that way. Let's head over here to the women's one and let's do the exact same thing. Let's remove this URL and let's add, let's go to collections and select women's. So let's select women's and then finally let's save it. Let's go ahead and test the men's one, for example. Let's click on it and it will take us to our collections page. Now, speaking of the collections page, let's go ahead and work on the collections page here. Obviously, we have our header and we have our sidebar. Now, what you'll notice is here in this case, uh, the header. Uh, something is is being overtaken here. So we need a little bit of space. We need a little bit of a gap between the header and the the actual content. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to my home page because that's where I can control this kind of data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my header because obviously I want a little bit longer of some logo height or let me change the logo height, but let me go with a different layout. And I should be able to Let's go with full width here. This is this is why sometimes you will have to play with the different settings. We can go to layout one, layout two, layout three, layout four, and layout five. Layout five is not going to be the one. Let's go ahead and stick with. Let's see here. I'll stick with layout two. Why not? Um, if I, let's see what I do here. Yep. Let's stick with layout two for now. Uh, let's go ahead and head over back to our collections page, right? And we are doing this all live. So you guys are seeing it, you know, raw and cut here. So here, let's go ahead and head over. This is a default collection. We want to collect the collections list, 
right? So this is where all the products are. We can actually head back into, which looks good. I just wanted to make sure that that looks good. We can head over to the men's collection as we once did. And there we go. So our text is actually showing now. All we had to do was change the type of header for the configuration that we have. For me, I want to make sure that this page is visible because this is a page that I want to focus on. If I didn't want to focus on this page and I wanted to just show my default collection list, then I would not have need to done what I just did. But this is a probably a better scenario. Scenario. So I take that back going into the other header is probably better for the version that I'm using It depends on what you guys are doing. You might find something else You might need to change the header that you're using But this one is good for what we're doing and like I said the simpler the better It doesn't have to get too complicated here. We have a, a picture of how the uh, Kind of banner looks for certain scenarios in certain situations uh, So if I click on let's say here this is the breadcrumb, which means that this image won't change, and it will show different images here. Now, I recommend something a little bit more horizontal if you're going to go with this. It's not required whatsoever, but um, let's go over here to the collections list. And by the way, 99% of the people won't even see that page unless you bring them to it. So here is where a really good place is where people can shop specific collections. So here we have the women's collection. Here we have the women's bottoms, women's tops. Uh, men's shorts, you know, etc. So that's kind of okay. Like I said, it depends on where you're funneling your customers to visit. Okay, so in our case, they're going to be visiting because of the the links that we've added. They're going to be visiting this page, and this page is already visible. Now let's go ahead and talk about these links here. So this is where a little bit of problems come in. You're going to have to control how many links you add. Uh, for this theme if you want to add filters in my case you don't want to have both you don't want to have filters and you don't want to have links in my opinion I like having the links in the collections better so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the color feature I don't want it to filter for colors because then it's going to literally start cramming up what I'm seeing here so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna remove this block that's the first thing I'm gonna do the type I'm also going to remove because I have no interest for that and the price I'm also going to remove once again and this is a much cleaner look I have my collections and now I have the image area so for the spring season whatever collection I'm going to just add an image I'm just gonna find an image that I can select that will look good that will fit good so this is a good image so I'll stick with this image right here and it says spring season gear view more and we'll, we can toggle that link by just simply going to here and we'll just go for let's say uh, collections and let's select the leggings, right? And here's the featured product section. We can switch what products show. Let's change the collection. We can pick leggings, something like this. Let's hit save, save, and that's it. So now that's it. We've we've basically done everything. Now let's just make sure our features work here. Let's go to the product. Let's hit compare. So add to compare, and let's hit cancel here because obviously we're on the Shopify editor. Um, now let's go to a different product. Let's go over here and let's add this to compare and let's see what comes up and there we go It works two products that are in comparison. So that's really it. That's the course This is basically everything you needed to know as a beginner and uh now your website is perfectly set up. The footer is taken care of. This is the best scenario to have as little links as possible in the footer. It makes it as clean as possible. Here we have all the links here and, and you know everything like that. You can go ahead and edit certain things. Um, you know you can have fun with it. Age verification, do all that. I personally don't have any pro you know any interest for that. Uh, but now you guys have a a, a free kind of course content that can really just direct you into getting the foundation done of your store, right? Everything else that you're going to do is going to be extra. It's not going to be something that's, you know, critical. Uh, it's not going to be something that, you know, is going to affect the, the store performance. This is more than enough uh, for you to go ahead and get started and actually make money from your store, all right? So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the course and uh, peace out, bye.